Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing this morning? Hope everybody slept well. So I have um, I have a, a little short a little short exhortation that I want to give you out of the scripture. Um, but before I do that, before I do that, I just want to I just want us to fix our eyes upon the Lord. He's where your help comes from. He is the source of all of your su supply. He's the beautiful one. <laughs> Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth they'll grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth they'll grow strangely dim in the light so much light so much light <laughs> so much light in the, in the light of his glory and grace there is a name I love to hear I love to sing its word it sounds like music in my ears it's the sweetest name on earth oh how i love you jesus why don't you sing it to him this morning oh how i love you Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me, because you first loved me. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for your presence. Isn't he so sweet? He's so sweet. His presence is so sweet. He's so kind and gentle tender-hearted compassionate he's everything that you want in a friend and more he's everything you knew you wanted in a friend and everything you didn't even know you wanted in a friend <laughs> I want to read something to you the Lord dropped in my in my heart early this morning. Colossians chapter 2 
verse 9. There's so much good stuff in Colossians chapter 2, but I'm just going to read a couple of verses and expound on them for you. And then I'm going to pray over you from Ephesians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and verse 10. For in him, meaning Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. We read that again, verse 9 and verse 10. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Now here in verse 9 it says, For in him, in him, in Christ, in, in who? In Christ, dwells, dwelleth all the fullness. That word fullness in the Greek is the noun, is a, is a noun, it's a noun. In verse 10, it says, and ye are complete in him. The word complete in the Greek, it's the same Greek word, but it's the verb of the noun, fullness. Complete here in verse 10 is the verb of the noun fullness in verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So this word, this Greek word, it means um, to be liberally su supplied, to be filled to the top. One of the words that's in the definition is to be, is literally to be crammed full. Um, copiousness. You heard the word copious? To be, you know, copious amounts. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about people who are, um, who drink, drink alcohol and they'll say, oh, they, they had copious, and I had copious amounts of alcohol last night. Um, that's a whole lot. Copiousness is, is generous amount. It's liberal supply, fullness, completeness, nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing lacking, not only, not only filled, but crammed down so that you could fit more in there. So in Christ, in Christ, in, G, in, the man, in the man Jesus, remember we talked about how, how Jesus was 100% man. So in the man Jesus, because it says, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Physically, if you look that word bodily up in the Greek, it means physically. So in, in the body of the man Jesus was the fullness, the completeness, the copiousness, the, the supply, the everything of the Godhead. Everything, all the, the completeness, all of the, the abundant supply everything of the Godhead dwelled inside, inside the physical body of Jesus. And then the next verse says, and ye, and you, another human being, another human being, and you are complete, in him. So you have been, because you have been placed in Christ, you've been joined unto him, then, ooh, that sun is bright. Um, let me get some, <laughs> trying to get to where the sun is not blinding me. Because you are in him, 
And in him dwells all of the fullness of the Godhead, then you are copiously supplied, crammed full, complete, completely supplied, lacking nothing in him. Who is the head of all principality and power? The word power there, the word power there is the Greek word exousia. Exousia. There's two Greek words that is translated into the English word power in your Bible. One of them is dunamis and one of them is exousia. Dunamis is, is kind of sounds like dino, kind of sounds like dynamite. It's where we get our English word dynamite from and it has to do with force with physical power, like, like supernatural force, power. What you think of when you think of the word power is, is dunamis. Exousia, on the other hand, primarily refers to authority. Remember I talk all the time about having this badge here, this badge in the spirit? That's exousia. So you have been filled in your in your physical body through the in the form of the indwelling Christ you have dunamis you have dunamis you have the force of God's power the fullness of the force of God's supernatural power lives on the inside of your physical body you you carry it you carry it but you also have a badge you have exousia. You have dunamis and you have exousia. Verse 10 says, and ye are complete. You are copiously supplied. Nothing lacking in him. Who is the head? He is the head of all principality, all rule, all authority. Is this all sounding a little f familiar? It should. He's the head of all rule, all authority. This is what principality refers to. Any rulership or authority can also refer to demons and angels, magistrates, kings, kingdoms. He is the head of all of those things and all authority, all exousia. There is no authority higher than his authority. There is no kingdom higher than him. He is the head. And you are complete in him. So, darlings of God, listen, listen. I know that there are times when you look at yourself. There are times that you look at yourself, you look at your situations, and you feel like, like you're missing something, that there's something missing, that you're not en you feel like you're not enough, you're not up to the task, you're not big enough, you're not strong enough, you don't have enough understanding, you're missing something. You feel sometimes like you're incomplete. But the Lord told me this morning he told me this morning, I went to the prayer room at Bethel uh, very early this morning, and uh, as I was leaving, he spoke this verse. I haven't even read this verse in a long time. I can't even remember the last time I read this. I've studied this before, but he spoke this to me, and ye are complete in him. I had to actually look it up, and I did a little bit of Re refresh your study on it before I started this video. So that means that, that it's important to him that he, for you to understand that you are complete in him. In Christ dwell the fullness, the liberal supply, the copious amounts of supply, crammed down, full to the top, crammed down and filled some more, crammed down and filled some more, nothing lacking, nothing lacking, nothing lacking, everything, everything of the Godhead, everything of the Godhead 
dwells in Jesus bodily. And you are complete. Complete. The verb of that Greek word for fullness. Fullness is the noun. Complete is the verb of the same Greek word. You are complete in him. The one who has the fullness of the Godhead bodily, you are in him. So you have that same fullness. You have that same fullness. And then right there at the end of that verse, it says, who is the head. So this should remind you, this should remind you of Ephesians that I pray over you all the time. I'm going to do it again. Ephesians chapter 1, where it says that, that God appointed Jesus the head of the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. For in your body lives the full measure of him who Christ. In your body lives the full measure of Christ. And what's in Christ? <laughs> oh my goodness. Guys, 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 you have to get this. In your body lives the full measure of Christ. And what, what did we just read? Dwells bodily in Christ? Physically dwells in Christ? The fullness of the Godhead. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you have to get this. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to pray. I'm going to start I'm going to pray this over you. Ephesians chapter 1. Receive this this morning. Receive, open up. Open up whatever you're doing right now that could be di distracting you. Just set that aside for just a second. Tune everything out around you. Focus in on these words. Focus in on the truth. That you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's only the truth you know that can make you free. And honey, listen to me. He wants you free. He wants you more free than what you're experiencing right now. In that area that you're struggling, that you, you keep thinking, you keep hitting your head against the wall in frustration, and you're black and blue from trying to break through those barriers, that wall... You can't beat your way through that wall. Heart belief is what moves the walls in your life. Heart belief is what sets the walls in place. So only the changing of your heart belief will move them out, move them further out so that you can have a wider, more vast territory of freedom to run in. heart belief and your heart belief only changes as you change your thinking as you renew your mind it starts here and it works its way down to your heart so it's important to listen listen closely listen with an intention of receiving insight of being changed Ephesians chapter 1 Verses 17 through 23. I pray to the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, my Papa of glory, that he would grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight. Oh. Do it today, Papa. Do it today. Today. Let today be the day. Let today be the day that revelation of insight comes. Let today be the day that revelation of insight comes and revolutionizes their lives. That he would grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, his truth brings light into the darkened places of your heart where there's no understanding and suddenly understanding comes. Suddenly the light of truth comes marching in and renovates the landscape. 
so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. And how rich is his glorious inheritance in you. You are his inheritance. You are his inheritance. What? Yes, indeed. Yes, you are his inheritance. So that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. And how rich is his glorious inheritance in you, his set apart one. And that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power. What kind of power? Dunamis power. So that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his dunamis that is in you and for you. His power will never work against you. He will never use his power for anything other than your good. In you and for you who believe. As demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above, far above, he is Colossians 2.10, he is the head of all principality and power. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that could be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, the fullness of him. And what is in him? <laughs> the fullness of him. And what is in him? The fullness of the Godhead. <laughs> Who fills all in all? For in your body lives the fullness of him. Who has the fullness of the Godhead bodily? For in your body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete, including you. You are complete in him. You are complete in him. Say that out loud. Say it. Say it out loud. I can't hear you, but you can hear you. Say, I am complete in him. Say it one more time. I am complete in him. I am liberally supplied, copious amounts of supply, crammed down and filled some more, and crammed down and filled some more, nothing lacking, nothing missing, complete in him. And in him, is the completeness, the fullness of the Godhead. He is the head of the church. And the church is his body. So you are a member of his body. It's not a headless body and it's not a bodiless head. It's one whole unit, one. You and he are one. He is one with his body. He's not a bodiless head going around. He has a body. He's the head and he has a body. What's true of the head belongs to the body. What's true of Jesus belongs to you, beloved. Don't live a life, don't live a life where you are experiencing lack. Don't allow that to be your normal. Don't accept lack. Don't accept the lies of the enemy that you are missing something, that you aren't complete. 
when the scripture says that you are complete in him. And in him dwells all the fullness, all the completeness of the Godhead. In your body, just put your hand here. Say, in my body dwells the fullness of him who houses the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So I am complete in him. Amen. Amen. I pray that you guys had your had your hearts wide open to receive this morning. Lord, I thank you that you honor your word, that you honor your word even above all your name, that your word does not return void. I thank you for revelation, that these words of truth that I have spoken are pregnant with revelation, and that revelation comes forth, is conceived and birthed in their lives today. We love you. We love you. I love you more than anything. I love you more than anything. I love you. Lord, I give my life to you. And I praise you. You're the Holy One. I praise you. You're the Holy One. I praise you. Lord, I give my life to you. Lord, I give my life to you. Lord, we surrender every aspect of this day. We cast our cares upon you. We refuse to carry upon our shoulders the burdens, the weight of responsibilities, the situations that are facing us, that we're facing. We refuse to carry what you have invited us to cast upon you. So we quickly, we quickly and intentionally and forcefully take those burdens and we cast them away from us. We cast them upon you because we know that you care for us, that we are a cared for people. We refuse to be careful because we are cared for. Thank you, Jesus. Love you. Love you guys. And I will see you later on. Share this. There's a whole bunch of people you know who would be blessed by this.